With that, I'd like to call the meeting to order. And I think we'll need a sergeant Samiri. at arms tonight because somebody will have to keep this meeting in order. Wait, before, before I determine um, a quorum, I would like to re-welcome a member of our board. And do I see him on the board? John Wibbins. John Wibbins is an active member of the board and he is replacing Augie for the rest of his term. Okay, were you gonna do something? Okay, just go ahead, keep talking. All right, to do a determination of, um, to do a determination of, of our quorum, could we start with, when I call your name, please say aye. Sally Carlin. Aye. Alan. Terry. Ann. Um, John. Hi, John. And we are, uh, and I am also here. So we have determined a quorum. You did receive minutes of the library board meeting. And um, are there any questions about those minutes? Hearing none, I am willing to entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Uh -huh. And a second. Any further discussion? If not, I will call a roll. Um, say A if you have approved the minutes. Sally? Aye. Alan? Terry? Ann? John? And I also approve. So the library minutes are approved. With that, we will hand the microphone over to our director. Deb Puta. I'm going to start with having asking Jenny to go over the patron engagement statistics report. So she'll start. Okay. All right. Hello. Well, I'm going to stay right here then. Um, so we sent out the patron engagement statistics report again, and it looks the same as last um, month. We're kind of working on refining a few things in the background, but I think we, we've got a good spot in terms of the types of data that we're showing everyone. Um, I would say that for a post-COVID, you know, COVID situation, that this was a pretty typical month. So you'll notice in a lot of the reports that we've We've kind of, um, we're either doing some steady growth um, or we're seeing a lot of consistency in terms of things like circulation, um, cardholder signups. Um, we are seeing some slow increases in gate count um, and then computer usage and Wi-Fi usage are also starting to increase. And I think, you know, when we look at how branches are being used and um, looking towards the summer, I, I anticipate that we'll begin to see more of that, especially with summer reading and some programming. Um, so pretty much this was a, a fairly typical um, month that we're seeing. Um, a few areas just to point out are programs. So uh, there is one, the, the red bars are actually May 20, not May 21. So those are previous year. And then the blue is this current year. And you can really see the differences in the amount of programming that we're doing now versus what we were doing back in May. Um, the other thing to note with programs is that in May of 2020, we were doing a lot of asynchronous programming, which is Facebook story times, um, Facebook recorded programs. And those we hadn't, as we adjusted to how we collect statistics, those hadn't been entered into our uh, statistics until the following month. So in June, we'll see more programming as we sort of incorporated those. As we kind of learned what asynchronous programming was during the pandemic, um, you'll see those start to get incorporated. But you can see that our programming has picked up quite a bit um, in the last two months as we've started to do more outdoor um, options for people. Um, and the last thing I'll point out is with uh, the branch patron engagement statistics, um, we now, you can now see a few of the um, results from uh, 2020 um, just to compare how uh, we're doing now versus how we were doing last year. And one thing we're gonna add in for next month is that 2019 piece so that you can see what pre-pandemic le levels look like versus last year versus current year. Um, but pretty much we're seeing uh, 
some consistency from what we what we saw last month. Um, we are there is a slight increase in the number of inactive patients that are being reengaged across the system. So I think we're just seeing more people come into the into the library and start to use it. Thank you. My favorite part of the whole report is the 95,569 members. And I'm thinking, what do we need to do to get that at 100,000? So we're going to do that, right? Yes. Thank you. Any questions for Jenny? In terms of that, <laughs> we'll get it. Uh, the rest of my report is pretty brief tonight. Um, I just, in terms of main library, finishes are going in all over. They're doing second and third floor carpets, that main millwork, the painting, the new doors, the hardware. Christine and I were just talking about doing another board tour probably in late summer to, so you can see what it looks like because it's changed a lot. A lot of the new lighting at Maine is in place and I have been thrilled at how comfortable it looks and it feels and, it, and it's just nice lighting. We had concerns about how low the ceilings were on some of the floors, first floor especially, and second floor in the mezzanine. When I say first floor, I'm really talking about the entryway, which is very low, but the lighting has alleviated a lot of that. It's just amazing how good that looks. Um, the drywall is going into the library and the annex first floor, so as they've worked down, third floor, second floor, they're into first floor now, drywall. And terrazzo work is supposed to start the week after the 4th of July, so we'll start seeing finished floors with the terrazzo. And after months of talking about the masonry scheduling, it was great to get 24 masons on site last week. So if you happen to go by the building, they were all, all over the place. And we're kind of hoping that that lasts for a while. Um, thankfully, most of the rain was on the weekend. So I'm, I'm thinking they're back on the, I was by the site this morning and they're back on the site. So it is feeling like we're at the start of the sprint now toward opening Maine. Some of the new furniture and the equipment will start being installed in late July and then continue through August. We'd like to start moving some of our support staff back into the main library in September. And then October is going to be the big move where we, all the books and all the rest of the furniture and all the rest of the staff. I still don't have a firm reopening date because the schedule keeps changing, but right now it's looking like no, almost certainly November. And when patrons are asking us about reopening, we're just saying we're on schedule for fall. We're not at the point where we want to give people an arbitrary date and not and have to back off on that yet, even though we have dates in our head. But we're not saying that publicly yet, but late fall. So questions on anything in either part of the report? So if if it is November, can you refresh our memory? What is our arrangement with the uh, school system with respect to this this space? We were supposed to be out um, in October, I believe. I'm looking around for confirmation. September. September. Um, I've contacted Todd Cummings at the school corporation and asked him about extending our lease until the end of the year. And I think he's amenable to that. I just haven't heard formally from him. but but I think that's not going to be a problem. We will, we should be out before the end of the year, but we may have some things that we've left behind that don't get moved right away. All of our old shelving that's not coming back with us has to be disposed of in one way, shape or form. So I think we'll, we'll hang on to the space until the end of the year. That doesn't seem like it's going to be a problem. Other questions? Hearing none. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the director's report? A second. I hear a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, let me call the roll. Sally. Aye. Alan. Aye. Terry. Ann. John. And I also approve. The director's report is approved. With that, we will go to the library bill list. Uh, Nancy.
with that, I feel I feel almost the need to um, find more than my one thing to point out to you. Um, <laughs> the bill list this month is three million nine hundred and ninety eight thousand seven hundred and one dollars and fifty two cents. Approximately one point six million of that what were construction expenses. And I'd like the, the one thing I'd like to point out is on the very last page of the listing, it is four payments to US Bank. The first three are our debt service payments for the three of the bonds that we have issued in 2018, 19, and 2020. It does say interest payment of, and that's probably of bond, um, bond services. That actually is just the beginning of the, uh, the note for that up for that bond or for that payment. It, it is not just the interest, but the interest and the principal payment. Other than that, the rest of the, um, the vouchers or the claims are what we typically uh, pay out every month. Any questions? Hearing none, I will um, entertain a motion to approve the bill reports. Okay, we have a mo motion and a second. I will call the roll. Sally? Aye. Ellen? Aye. Terry? Ann? Aye. John? Aye. And I also approve. Um, next, we have the gift account. I see that there are three gifts. <laughs> And there's also a thousand dollars from Peter Brash and from another thousand from Master Bill. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve the gifts? I have a motion in a second. I will call. Christine, just before you do, okay, just a question. So, is the Shures Communication Development Technology Fund, does that relate to the photographs that we got from? Uh, South and Tribune and the processing of that, or is that, is that what that no, is? No, it does. Yeah. That's a different. Yeah, it's uh, applied for. Okay. Okay, we, we have a motion and a second to approve. Did I call them? No, I didn't. Sally? Aye. Alan? Aye. Terry? Ann? Aye. John? And I also approve. So uh, we have approved the library bill list. I mean, the gift blog. The gift blog. Uh, with that, we'll move to personnel changes, and I will return the mic to Deb. I'd like to first introduce our new CFO, Kelly Kitchen. This is her first day, so board meeting day on top of first day. Um, Kelly's last position was at Goshen Community Schools where she served as Executive Director of Finance and Operations. So she really does understand Indiana public finance. Um, and that's, <laughs> those, that's hard to find. Um, she's worked with public finance for about 20 years and we are very happy she chose us for the next phase of her career. So Kelly and Nancy will be working together until Nancy's retirement at the end of August. And then I also wanted to mention the summer interns that we're starting. We have six of them on the personnel changes tonight. And finally, something that you're not seeing tonight, but you will start to see next month, is our revamp of the staffing at Maine. So we are beginning to bring people, assign people positions at the new Maine. So we're hiring them back. There's some promotions involved, some new positions um, from existing staff. Uh, and then we also have some vacancies at Maine that we'll be advertising for. So you're going to see a lot of changes coming up. Um, 
new public service vacancies, there's, there will be additional facilities positions, and we're going to be doing some outside hires both for those and then to fill the, the vacancies where we've moved, we're moving people that we already have to Maine. So both things. That's it. Thank you. With that, I would entertain a motion to approve the personnel changes. I would have a question. You have yeah. a question. Can't help but think that it will. So far, we've been really lucky in, in the hiring that we've been able to do. Um, but I can't help but think that as, as this goes on and as the labor market continues to tighten, it's going to impact us. So we're, we're starting early, but I still think we'll have some, it'll be hard on some of the positions. A good question. Sarah, Sarah has every confidence that we would. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. I agree with you. Thank you. With that, do I have a motion to approve the personnel changes? So moved. I'll oh, second. Uh, any, uh, any further, further discussion or questions? questions? With that, I'll call the roll. Sally? Aye. Alan? Aye. Terry? Ann? Aye. John? And I also approve. So we have approved the personnel changes and welcome Kelly. Next, uh, reports of special library board committees. To the best of my knowledge, we have no, not had any special board committee meetings. So, um, we can move on to unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? Hearing and seeing none, we can move to new business. And certainly a favorite part of my meeting is hearing from Antonia about the change orders for the main library project. project. I will turn the mic over to Antonia. Thank you so much. And thank you for the warm welcome as well. Um, so I don't have any internet uh, problems this time around, so we should be able to have this relatively smoothly. Um, first off, we have Art Mosaic um, for one change. This is for um, PR 72 for the West Gallery column wraps who wind up changing the terrazzo um, nosing uh, in order to wrap around the columns for $926. For golf, we had four changes. Uh, one for the Annex Gallery Silly Modifications. Um, there were a couple of Bully and Andrews directed drywall modifications, which included MEP um, patching, uh, et cetera, that we have directed them to proceed on as a part of our allowance. Um, and then we also have the West Gallery column wraps, which include um, fabric wrap panels. Uh, that had been changed in that area. And then we also had a cost for uh, installing a wall inside of the book drop area that has been converted to the security guard's office. Um, those four changes resulted in a cost change of $20,000, uh, 855, $20,855. Interior finishes, we had one change for the millwork. Um, this was a part of our value engineering process where we changed um, some of the uh, white oak to a rubber base. That rubber base cost resulted in a overall cost change of $28,000. $292.55. We also had, we've accepted the cost for installing the faux beams um, inside of the, I think it's the children's area um, or the program room um, for $12,544. That cost, um, we, uh, Billy and Andrews was carrying a, an overall cost um, for the theming space. So it wound up not having a major negative impact to our contingency because we were already um, accounting for some of those dollars already. Um, we have a cost from mechanical concepts. 
This is for circuit setters and the library, library heat pump areas for $1,564. We have one change from Osteban um, for painting and providing um, wall coverings for $29,000. $293. We had three changes for, for TPC. Um, there is an internal allowance for two of them. This is for their structural supports. And then also the uh, audiovisual electrical coordination needed in the auditorium. Um, and then we also had a cost for the third floor annex space for audiovisual for $40,000. $631. Um, this will be accounted for from the Community Foundation. Um, so again, the overall cost was $40,631. Last but not least, we have Zolkowski with two changes. Um, one, to install grout between the CMU and the drainage mat. Uh, this is around the overall uh, perimeter of the annex space. And then we also had the opportunity to go with sanded caulk joints, which um, as we all know, caulk uh, typically has a sheen to it. So having that sand inside of, uh, inside of that caulking reduces some of that sheen uh, and makes it look a little bit more seamless with the grout around. Um, so that overall cost is $15,049 for an overall cost for a uh, change request for June um, of $188,647.30. Does anyone have any questions? And Great. Both the uh, correction of the May change order as well as the 29000 if you did, okay. All right. With that, let me just quickly summarize what you've told us. Thank you very much. Um, so what we have is a total of eight changes. Art Mosaic for an increase of $926. Goff for a change, an increase of $20,855. Interior finishes for an increase of um, $28,292.55. For Larson Danielson, a change increase of $12,544. For Mechanical Concepts, a change order of $1,564. Osterbahn's first uh, was a correction of May for $39,492.75. The second was the change order for an increase of $29,293. TPC Technologies, which will be reimbursed by the Community Foundation of $40,631. And Zolkowski Construction for change increase of $15,049. For total changes of $188,647.30. I would entertain a motion to approve the change orders. I have a motion in a second. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, let me call a roll. Sally? Aye. Alan? Aye. Terry? Ann? Aye. John? And I also approve. So the change orders are approved. And thank you, Antonia. Um, next, we have the recommendation of bid awards for computer equipment and peripherals. Um, who will be discussing that, Deb? Uh, Mr. Masters attached to the bid tab explaining why we can accept just one bid since there was no competitive bidding at this one. Um, so if you have any questions about where we're going with this, this will be, this is again, the computer package and peripheral package for pretty much the whole of main library and the annex. So, 
and the total on there um, is, so I don't think it was on there, 264,606, I'm sorry, $264,626.86. And if I could, I will um, tell you the individual bid orders. And uh, so the bid package for Apple was $43,471.14. For Microsoft, $105,000, oh, $105,198.30. For Lenovo, $22,117.86. For HP, $79,936.60. For Samsung, $12,290.97, and for ASUS, which is misspelled on the page, but a ASUS computer for $1,612 for the grand total of what Deb previ previously said. $1,626.86. With that, we will ask for a motion to approve the um, Bid award for microcomputer equipment and peripherals. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Being a rookie here, and I wasn't following this previously, was this about what you anticipated? Considering the audience, but I kind of think it was. Ish, Ish is here. Ish, what do you think? It wasn't a it was there? It was no surprise. At no, least. I don't think so. Yeah, good. Thank you, John and Alan. Any other questions or comments? With that, I will call the roll. Sally? Aye. Alan? Aye. Terry? Anne? Aye. John? And I also approve. So we have approved the bid award for microcomputer equipment and peripherals. Thank you. Next, we will move. Um, oh, somebody will move to approve the resolution to declare excess and withdrawn library. Oh, no, I never. Why do I jump over grants? There's the check mark. Please, can we uh, talk about our grants? So anything more specific other than interior enhancements? Uh, examples of that would be shelving equipment and maintenance. Signage, I think, but <laughs> well, there's, there's no shortage of places to spend it. But Lisa's doing a fabulous job with, with the grant writing. And yes, Lisa is. Yeah, yeah. This is... Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Do we have a motion to accept and approve these grants? Um, I heard a motion and a second. Any further questions? With that, I will call the roll. Sally? Aye. Alan? Terry? Anne? Aye. John? And I also approve. Next. See, I always want to jump into the library board resolution to declare excess and withdrawn library materials. Do I hear a motion? Second. Okay, so we have a motion to uh, sell our materials, friends of the library, for a dollar, excluding items selected by library staff. Um, and and any excess computers, right? All right, do I hear, um, we have a motion and a second and a question.
So I did hear a motion and a second. Any other questions? It does seem hard for those of us who have ancient computers at home to think of recycling, but I know it's necessary, especially when they're so old that they don't even have backup support, but thank you. Um, let me call the roll. Sally? Aye. Alan? Aye. Terry? Ann? John? And I also approve, so that um, item is approved. From that, we'll move to other business. Is there any other business? Hearing none. Um, do we have any visitors or member of the public who wish to address the library board? No? All right, there are no hearing, there is no hearing of visitors. With that, we will move to news and education items. Yep. Now that we're back in person, we also wanna bring back some staff presentations to you. And normally what we do here is update or introduce you to one of our public services that you may not know much about, but this time we're kind of differing a little bit. For the first time, we were adding a maintenance product, maintenance management product that includes work orders and all kinds of things called HIPPO to our facilities department. And we have Joe Geffrick, our assistant facilities manager, to talk to you about what it does and how we're using it, because we're, we're pretty happy with it. Joe is setting up, let me say that he's worked for us for about six months, and in, um, in dog years, it seems like seven years. Is from what he's had to do in the last six months. So we're really excited that he's here and all that he's done for that. So are you set up? Joe. All right, I think I'm ready here. <clears throat> so uh, again, my name is Joe Geffrick. I'm the assistant facilities manager. Uh, for those who haven't met me yet, uh, I do wanna thank Deb and Trish for inviting me here today uh, to give you a, a short presentation on our CMM S system. Um, so you may be asking yourself, well, what is a CMMS system? It stands for computerized maintenance management software. Um, and Bob and myself are very excited to be implementing this uh, for the library. Um, there are a lot of uh, good uses that I hope uh, I can show you today. And we do have a little demo as well. Um, these sorts of systems are used uh, in all sorts of organizations, large and small, across a variety of industries. Uh, they've been out for quite a while now. Um, some of the highlights uh, that they can do that uh, Deb mentioned, first and foremost, work order management system. Uh, that's always big for uh, the facilities team. Uh, it's also an inventory management system, an asset management system. It's a place to store vendor contact information. Um, and you can also think of it as a big database for your digital materials. Uh, so we're using it to store our manuals, ground planes, uh, paint specs for buildings, things like that. Uh, so it's a place to centralize all that information. Um, I'm gonna show you here a little bit, uh, um, some of the capabilities of this system. So like Deb had mentioned, uh, the program we're using is called HIPPO. Um, it is an online system. And so when you log in here, uh, you can kind of see all our branches uh, listed here. And in this column right here, you're gonna see uh, just a count of all our open work orders for each particular branch. And then that can be broken down further here uh, by preventative maintenance work orders, what are demand work orders, what's critical, what's overdue, uh, and requests that have come in from other people. Um, so the next question is, well, how do work orders get into the system? Well, there's a couple ways that can be done. Uh, first of all, Bob and I, uh, as we're walking around our facilities and we notice things, uh, we can input work orders directly into the system. Um, but each branch also has a login ID as well. Um, and so branch managers, the librarians in charge, uh, and other staff members uh, can report work orders to us directly as well through the system. So they can act as our eyes and ears, uh, which is really helpful when you're managing multiple facilities. 
Uh, and we tried to keep it simple for them. Uh, when they log in, they have a slightly different uh, page than this, but it basically it's a half a page, a couple drop down menus uh, and uh, a form where you can kind of explain what the work request is. Um, and the other cool thing about that feature is then they can get automatic updates uh, from the SIPO system. As we close out work orders, they'll get an email back that a work order has been complete or it's in progress or we're waiting on parts or whatever the situation happens to be. And then the last way work orders can be put into the system are through scheduled work orders. Um, and that's your preventative maintenance tasks. So that's things that reoccur annually, quarterly, uh, monthly, whatever the case happens to be. And I'm just gonna kind of show you some examples of that. So we're gonna go into our Francis branch here. And if we go down to scheduled work orders, you can see some of the scuff, stuff we have scheduled here. So we have our annual carpet cleaning, uh, fire alarm and smoke detector testing, fire extinguisher testing, uh, window cleaning, uh, filter changes, HVAC inspections. And basically what this does is this will auto generate a work order for us. Um, and then give us a set amount of time to complete it. Um, so that helps to keep us accountable and helps to get everything kind of out of our brains uh, for things that are long-term projects for us. Um, the other cool thing I wanna show you here is our asset management uh, portion of this program. Uh, so we'll go ahead and stick in our Francis branch here. Um, if I go down to equipment, What's gonna pull up is a list of all the equipment specific to Francis Branch. Um, and this is the case for all our facilities. Uh, we're actually tracking right now a little over 230 assets. Uh, and we're expected to add a ton more uh, once the main renovation uh, completes and we get all that information uh, from the construction team and all those closeout documents. Um, but you can see some of the things we're tracking in here, uh, boilers, electrical panel, panels, um, fire panels, microwaves, refrigerators, uh, water heaters, water softeners. And I know it's a little tough to see on this screen, um, but what this is all documenting, this is documenting things like the model number, serial number, where it's located. Um, it tracks a condition assessment on all our equipment that we can do yearly and update. Um, as well as the operational status. If you click on this little icon next to one of a, a, a specific asset, so we're gonna look at the water heater here. It's actually gonna pull up um, additional information. So we can actually see a picture here of that asset. Um, we can see when the warranty expires, when it was installed. And this is where we can also attach documents. Um, so you can see right here, we actually have uh, the manual, the parts list and the warranty for this specific piece of equipment. When you click on it, it comes up just like that. Uh, so no more file cabinets full of obsolete manuals, um, rummaging around, where did I put that? Things like that. It's all right here at our fingertips. Um, you'll also notice that there's the scan code right here. So what this is, every asset here, um, has been assigned a QR code. Um, and those have all been attached to our assets out in our field as well. So when we're out repairing something, uh, we can actually take our phone and scan that QR code and all this information pops up on our fingertips as well. Uh, so that's pretty exciting for us. Uh, makes us a more intelligent uh, facilities department as we're going about our day to day. And then just kind of a few other things here. Um, you can see uh, it'll show if there's any current work orders open on a specific piece of equipment. Uh, you can look back at work order history over a set period of time. Um, so if we ever have to come to administration and say, well, our recommendation is it's time to replace a certain piece of equipment, we have information to back it up. We can come and tell you, well, it's broken down five times in the last five months. And this is what broke on it. Um, this is the labor and the, the cost we put into it, and we can have a more informed discussion uh, about that. And then again, scheduled work orders, anything that's due will pop up here as well.
The last thing I want to show you here, um, you can also run various reports uh, off of all this information. Um, so if you wanted with various criteria, so if you wanted to look at your current work orders uh, and pull up a list of the uh, highest priority work orders, uh, you can certainly do that. If you wanted to look back in your maintenance history uh, and look at all your completed work orders, say you wanted to see uh, a particular vendor and all the work they've done for you for a specific time period, you can pull up that information. Uh, one cool little feature, which I, I've given this presentation now a couple times, but I don't believe I've shared it with anyone yet. Um, you can actually calculate uh, depreciation on your assets um, based on the information you input. Um, because for the most part, we know what our purchase cost was, uh, what's our expected uh, time or life of a, a particular asset, um, and then when it was installed. So I'll go ahead and just run that report for you. Um, so we'll pull that up and you can see, uh, it'll show annual depreciation, current book, book value. And the reason I'm showing this to you um, is because this is something we're discovering right now. And I think it could have uh, applications outside of our department. Um, I think some of this information that we're gonna start getting from the system could be useful to something like accounting, where you may want this for insurance purposes or, or what have you. I'm sure there are smarter people out there that can uh, figure out uses for this. Um, but I did wanna point that out that I think um, this could expand uh, into other, other departments here at the library. So we'll go ahead and close that out. <clears throat> and then the last uh, kind of nifty feature here, um, this is a little module here and I'll change the time frame here for year to date. This kind of shows all the work orders that we've uh, completed since we started using this system. Um, we really started using this toward the end of March, beginning of April, uh, once we had gotten everything set up and all the information put in. Um, but since that time, you can see we've used it uh, to complete 22 preventative maintenance tasks. Uh, we've actually used it to um, complete 118 uh, work orders. Uh, and it does look like, uh, it does track whether you're completing them on time or not. It looks like we were off on one. I'll have to look back and see uh, what that one was, but we are human, I guess. Um, and then you can actually get, uh, a calculation on your average days to complete a work order. Now you can see that as 19 right now, uh, that should not be alarming to anyone. Um, what that can tell you, that can tell you uh, different things uh, and it fluctuates frequently. Um, if that number is particularly low, it could tell you that we were dealing with a lot of emergencies uh, over a period of time. There were a lot of things that were urgent and we had to go fix them right away. Um, if this is a little higher, it may have been, well, we didn't have emergencies. So we were able to get to some of the lower priority work orders on our list that may have been sitting for a little longer. Um, and if you're somewhere in between, maybe you were waiting on parts or vendors uh, to complete as well. And then you get a couple little charts here uh, that show a breakdown of uh, the open work orders, what's started, what's in progress, uh, what's waiting on parts. And then also a, a little pie graph of what sorts of equipment you were working on over a given period of time as well. Um, so kind of to button this up, I, I did promise I would be brief here. Um, we're, we are really excited about, uh, about having this program. We think it's gonna make us a more efficient department. Uh, and as I kind of said, also an informative department and it's also gonna help us be accountable as well. Uh, I know our supervisors are in on this program as well, so they can always glance in uh, on our day-to-day. -day. Um, and one of the big things uh, when I was hired on um, in my interview process was, and it's been a big thing for me in, in my career here is <clears throat> for facilities management, I think one of the things we're trying to get away from is that reactive maintenance. Uh, things break and you go fix them. It breaks and you go fix them. And you're kind of in that cycle where you're from project to project to project. I think the uh, thing that this is gonna help us do, it's gonna get us um, focusing more energy on that preventative maintenance, uh, predictive maintenance and proactive maintenance. 
Um, and I think that's going to make us uh, not only an average or a good maintenance department, but I think that's going to push us uh, to be a great uh, maintenance department for the library. Um, that's kind of uh, my presentation. I thank you for your, the few minutes you gave me, and I'm happy to answer any questions if you have anything. I do have a question sure. about page one. What is treasure chest? Sure. Um, <laughs> I'm going to look over at Bob here because that was new to me as well. Okay. <laughs> Okay. We're not there very often, but we do keep it. One of these days we're going to sell it, and we just haven't gotten to that point, but this might be a good time, actually. Who knows? But, yeah. but I, I like having a treasure chest. But, okay. It's run by a local nonprofit. It's like a, a, a resale, as, as Bob said, it's a resale shop, but it's the one in North River. Okay, thank you. Um, are there other questions? Yes, so. Joe, with respect to this, it's very impressive. But when we when we came to doing this this hippo, it sounds like we've just started this in the last several mm -hmm. months. So, did we need to input all this data? So, you, you've actually input all this data since in the last two or three months. Yeah. So that was uh, part of the project that I uh, took on right when I came on board. Uh, we do have uh, an account representative here that helped us upload this information. Uh, Basically what you send them is a CSV file, uh, which is like an Excel sheet uh, with all this information. And we were able to pull some of this information from documents we had lying around, uh, information packets on our equipment, uh, things like that. So but when, it, when it came to like the instructions and the part man, man, and things, were they able to then go out in, in many situations and then pull it off the internet from, once we gave them the model we had then they were able to pull it up or did you all, actually scan all that information in and go and find it whole cloth. So it was a twofold approach. It wasn't anything like uh, we gave to Hippo and they were able to provide that. We did have to do some legwork to pull all that information. Uh, and we approached that uh, twofold. We basically took the model and serial number that we already had uh, and did um, some internet searches to kind of pull all that information and attach it. And then of course we had uh, document, hard copies of documents uh, and some of that we did scan in. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like it's very impressive. <laughs> Well, fantastic. We, we appreciate that vote of confidence. Yeah, and that, that is the big time investment. And the time investment on this program is kind of upfront uh, to get all that information in here. Um, and the longer you use it and the more data you collect with it, the more powerful they become. Um, I know we're, like I said, we're gonna get a lot of information from the main, uh, main project uh, and we can capture that right away. So, you know, 10 years down the line, uh, someone else coming in may not know where we stored something, but they can certainly go and look at this this program and have everything uh, at their fingertips. So.
Sure, and and uh, I, I hear you completely there. I, I'm I'm familiar. Um, for now, uh, Bob and I are kind of the two that are uh, uh, completing these work orders. But this system is set up for expansion. Um, when you close out a work order, um, you can set it up so that there's specific checklists that a technician has to follow. Uh, they may have to attach attach pictures of the completed work and sign off on it. So as a manager, once that work order gets closed out, you can kind of go back in there and verify, okay, did they check everything off? Let me take a look at the picture of the work. Does it look correct? And if anything suspicious or something like that, then you can of course go back out uh, in the field then uh, and hold them accountable. So accountability, this system is definitely set up for that. So. your comments thank you so much this is wonderful it does remind me of that big drawer at home that i have from <laughs> manuals from from a long time so yes um with that we've uh covered all of our agenda items and i do want to report that our next library board meeting will be in this room in one month on july 26th 2021 at 4 15 and we will be in person and via zoom i also want to thank rachel for all the work that she's done putting this together and making sure that it has run smooth as silk thank you so much thank you so much um, with that i will entertain a motion to adjourn so moved do i hear a second um, sally I, Alan, I, Terry, Ann, John, and I also approve. With that, thank you all for being here. The meeting is closed.